It's taken me two years to build and convert, but it's finally done. A full Warhammer army where every single miniature is converted, re-sculpted and redesigned. And today I'll take you through that journey. And this video has one of its parts sponsored by the awesome t-shirts from Into the AM, but more on that later. As you guys know, this project had been massive for me. The idea started with buying one giant kit, splitting all the bits into three, and then we sculpt three giants from those bits. And the first giant, as you might know already, is already finished. It took me about 18 months to get a finished model, mainly because I had no idea what I was doing, but also because the tools that I had wasn't good enough. Like green stuff, F sucks. This is my big fat pirate zombie conversion. And it's sculpted mainly using Apoxy and Tamiya putty. And once I figured out that these were the two putties that I could actually work with, things started moving really smoothly. But as this one started getting done, we found that all of the video material we had for the building was just completely vanished. Luckily, I have three more giants that I have to build now. And I'm going to take you along that journey and show you the process of building and converting an entire army of giants. And the best thing with this project, I save about $400 as I only buy one giant and then build three from that. And if you guys want to do the same, I have a surprise at the end of the video. So you guys don't have to go through it as a grueling process to learn how to sculpt miniatures to make this army yourself. So where does one start on a project like this? Well, since we have limited amount of bits, you need to decide which bit goes on which giant before you start building it together. Personally, I started by just figuring out the concept of my army. And my concept was to make pirate giants. That way I could easily make extra legs by just making pig legs. And if I would have wanted, I could have made a hook as a an hand and an arm instead of sculpting an arm. Once I had a concept in place, I started building together each separate body part. So I built together the legs, I built together the arms and the hands so that I would be able to see exactly how many bits I had and which one would fit together with which giant. And one thing I was really keen on making was a giant with a lot of muscles. Because all the giants that Games Workshop have made has always been the really fat ones with a big beer belly and being a bit lumpy. And I wanted one that was muscular. And for the third giant and the last one, this was the one that I had most bits for. I had the belly, I had one entire leg, and I had some hands for it. Heck, I even had elbows. So the last giants, I wanted to keep somewhat close to the Games Workshop one, but I wanted to add a piratey flavor. So today, let's start with that one, because that one is going to be easy to show my step-by-step -step process. And then for the rest of the stuff, let's see where we end up. With the main body parts built together, I could start filling the body out with tin foil. And the reason why we use tin foil is twofold. One, it's easy to shape and it's easy to reshape. And number two, it fills up the materials without adding too much weight. Because the sculpting epoxy is already quite a lot heavier than the plastic that the game's workshop kit is, so the tin foil helps with not adding too much weight. With some tin foil in place, I could start adding in some armatures. And this is one of those steps that saved me a lot of time with the second and third giant, as opposed to the first one that I did. Because previously I've just been using steel wire. And now for this project, I got some armature wire and it's just so much easier to shape and so much easier to cut apart. With the armatures in place, we could add some of those plastic bits, like the elbows, and then just fill out the gaps with tin foil. The same thing goes for the leg. Make sure to glue some of that tin foil onto the armature, and with that, we can start sculpting. And one thing to note when sculpting your first miniature or learning to sculpt is that use more references. That's just generally overall the rule. The more references you have, the better. And that is for every step, because with these giants, especially the muscular one, I didn't have any body parts to use as a reference for the legs and for the torso. So maybe you can borrow someone else's giant to get the reference size for the parts you need. Or if you still have the original box, 
The giant on the back is the right scale, so you can use that as a reference when having the armatures to make the right length of the arms and the right length of the legs. And the second general rule, don't stress it. Because if you give yourself time and carefully look at the references, go back and check your measurements and make sure that the position looks good, you're gonna be so much more happy with the end result than if you just stress it and call it done with whatever you do the first second you do it. Now to the fun part. And here's what I wish I would have done with my first fat giant. And one of the reasons why the things ended up taking so much time. Because I didn't have epoxy. So this time with the roughly shaped tin foiled miniature piece, I brought out the epoxy and started sculpting. At first I sculpt some very rough shapes and I make sure that I make them slightly smaller than the end shape will be when I start adding the final layers. And this is by far the easiest epoxy clay that I've ever sculpted with. And for 90% of the work, I just add Vaseline and use this to push around the clay. And once we have the rough shapes in place, we let it rest for a day. And this is very important because we want to come in with fresh eyes day two and we want everything to be hardened so we don't push any of the things around while working on other areas. When we arrive at day two, we have to be way more careful when adding the different parts and be a little bit more deliberate when adding muscles. So I brought out all of my muscle references and start adding tiny blobs to the miniature representing each one of the muscle parts and then slowly blend them together. Again, mostly using my fingers, but I've also got a larger silicon sculpting tool. And if you want to get that sculpting tool, as always, we have listed that on our website squidmar.com and there you can find all the tools we use in the videos with links to Amazon so you can quickly get whatever you need. It is really important to softly blend these together with the rest of the muscle parts and the rest of the body because if you don't blend them together and just make them like muscles it's not gonna look like you have skin on top of the muscles but it's gonna look like just single muscle group lonely island blobs on the mini. So make sure you soften them out and make sure that they go together with the rest of the skin. Once I had the arms sculpted, I realized that they were about two, three millimeters longer than what would have been ideal. So it looks a little bit like monkey arms, but we can fix this and we can hide this with a few simple tricks. So before the clay was fully hardened, I brought out some of the Warhammer bits from the giant kits that I hadn't used yet. These were some wooden planks that I could add as wristbands to the miniature. If I just softly push them in, not too far, it looks like they're part of the skin. Once the clay has cured, I can add some glue in there to make sure that the parts stick and then I add some leather straps around the arm to make it look like he's made these wristbands from the wooden planks. And with that we've hidden the long monkey arms and made it look more realistic. And with the arms and the shoulders in place and of course the giant tits, I think it's time to start sculpting a leg and a pig leg. <laughs> Once the muscles have the right shape, before the clay hardens, I make sure to add in any textures that I want to have. The Games Workshop skin is kind of clean, but it does have a lot of wrinkles, so I just use the tip of the sculpting tool to add in some wrinkles to make it blend together with the original sculpt. When I was sculpting this miniature, I wasn't just solely working on this mini, because between every miniature part that I sculpt, I need to let it rest and cure. 
because if I start working on another area, I just softly touch that clay before it has hardened. The shape is going to be changed and something is going to be ruined, so I'm gonna have to go and fix that again. So one of the good things with this project was that I had a couple of different minis that I could jump between and sculpt on different parts every day for every mini. And I didn't have to wait 24 hours before I could do the next part of a miniature. So with the general shapes, the muscles generally added to the miniature, I wanted to add some extra things to the mini. Because at this stage, outside of the peg leg, she didn't quite feel like a pirate. So the first thing I decided to sculpt was an eye patch, just simply using some of the Tamiya putty as well as some epoxy. I then came up with the idea that I wanted the flintlock pistol, so I found some references on the internet and just started adding shapes onto a green stuff world pipe that I had glued to his hand. As a final detail, I wanted to add a treasure map. And the simplest way I could think of doing this would be to take a piece of plastic card, cut it apart, add some rough edges to it, and then use a hot air gun to give it some flowing shapes. And with that, I think we have our first miniature done. But to make a full army, I need four giants. And we have the big project left to do, the muscular giant. So let's bring out even more references and start sculpting muscles on this bad boy. And while I do, let me talk about this week's sponsor, Into the AM. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Lucas and I wear the shirts from Into the AM in almost every video. Number one, because these are some of the coziest t-shirts that you can find on the internet and they fit really well for someone tall as I am. But number two, they have some really awesome looking graphic t-shirts and awesome shirt designs that you're not gonna find anywhere else on the internet. My favorite ones are these full body prints, but if you're into graphic design shirts, they have hundreds and hundreds of designs. Right now you can get three graphic t-shirts for $61.95 and if you use the code Squidmar you get an additional 10% off your purchase. So if you want to look just as beautiful as I do right now just go to Into the AM and buy some of their awesome looking shirts. So one thing that I've found working on the massive muscular giant is that I love epoxy. Just so much. Because as I was sculpting the mini, I tried some other clays to sculpt the pants and I tried to work with some other materials, but I always kept coming back to the epoxy as it was so easy to just add layers and move around the layers as I was working. If I was working on a smaller miniature, like a true 32 millimeter tall mini, I would probably work with Tamiya epoxy. But for something bigger like this, the epoxy is perfect for every step. And similarly to the previous giant, just using references and always checking each muscle before you add the next one, making sure that it looks like it should do on a body so you don't make up your own anatomy. Because we want these things to look somewhat close to reality, because if it doesn't, people are going to feel like there's something that looks weird. And if you need to hide or add parts, you can always just maybe sculpt the necklace, add bits from the giant's bit box that haven't been used yet, or take stuff from your bits box that you have at home. So, I'm nearing really close to done with the Giants. Um, I feel like there's one thing missing with the Giants, and that is pirate hats. And I came up with the idea that maybe I should ask my friend Ogreg if he wants to be a part of the video and sculpt some hats for me. He was actually really down. He's gonna start sculpting on them today. Hopefully he'll be done before the video ends. Now I gotta go finish the last stuff, the last details, and I'll let you know in a few seconds. Now I just need to do the last one. And luckily, Games Workshop had sent us this box with King Broad. And because this video project was running out of time and I really wanted to get the giant finished before the end of the video, I decided to build him kind of as is. With one exception, adding another peg leg. Because pirate stuff.
When I was getting close to done with this project, I came up with an idea. And I tend to have a lot of ideas, but I think this one is a good one. So I reached out to my friend and sculptor Ogre Reg and asked him if he wanted to help me to build a fill out kit that you can use whenever you're building a set like this. So you're gonna have an extra set of belly, an extra set of legs, an extra set of arms and feet. So if you buy a giant kit, you can just take these files and 3D print them. And if you wanna do this now, you don't have to sculpt everything yourself. You can just 3D print it and we put it up on our Patreon, so all the patrons get it for free. But if you don't want to join the patron, you can just go to our website and buy it for, I don't know what price we're gonna have, probably $8 or something. And then hopefully you can enjoy making giants just as much as I have. Just take a look at how awesome they look when you build them together. The bits don't have a perfect match, so you are going to need to use a little bit of epoxy clay and maybe do some carving to make them fit with some of the bits. But it really makes your life 100 times easier than having to sculpt stuff from the scratch that I had to do. But now guys, I think I've talked enough. I hope you enjoyed this video because I most certainly loved making these minis. If you want to see Lucas do something similar, he has an idea. And he said if you guys smash 10,000 likes on this video, he's going to buy another kit and then make three different minis from it, making his own unique army. Not using giants, but a different army. I'll keep it a secret. And now it's time for a grand reveal. Thank you so much Into the AM for sponsoring this video and of course our patrons that every month support us. And right now you even get a massive human body part thing to 3D print if you join the Patreon. So go do that. Have a great day. Bye bye.